I'm the Scar Model Geek, and in this video, I'll be heading into the genre of horror. And I'll be doing something that I've been wanting to do for a little while now. This figure you see, I created from scratch in a piece of online software called Titancraft. I've used this online site a number of times in my dioramas now. It really has opened up so many more options for me. Just like 3D printing, it's just another added tool to my arsenal. You can create whatever pose you need. You can even adjust all the expressions, adjust his fingers, his hands, his arms, his legs, whatever you need to get that very specific pose. Because this software is specifically focused on fantasy figures, you are limited in what type of garments you have for the modern world. But there are little work, uh, workarounds. You can have sneakers and uh, tracksuit pants and that type of thing. So you can make it work, but you are very limited in that area. Having said that, I actually love this uh, site. It gives me, like I said, a lot more options for my dioramas. You do get a choice of male or female characters, as well as some limited aliens and fairy creatures and that type of thing. This particular figure took me about 15 minutes to create. But most of it was because I was uh, experimenting a lot of trial and error to get the poses I liked and I kind of changed my mind halfway through it as well with what I wanted. Once you have created the figure you want, it's only a couple bucks to actually download the STL file for 3D printing. And the great thing is, you can always go back and make some slight alterations and download those ones for free. And you can keep experimenting with poses, keep downloading them as long as you don't change the main character. All for free. Now this was the final result that I ended up with and it took me about three goes to get what I wanted. I ended up removing our victim shoe just to add a bit more drama to the diorama. I also found this bucket online but I couldn't find a decent mop so I'll be scratch building that. And this is our big nasty spider that'll be in the attic. Now this is exactly the same spider that I used in my attack of the spider diorama. But I'll be painting up very differently this time around. I'll be making him a bit furry as well. So, let's get stuck into it. I'm using some of this basic skin tone and this brown sand from Vallejo for the base colour. And also the black red for some of the shading. Now I'll start off blocking in the base colour. And then using some of the burnt red and some white and also some medium. I start adding all the different tones to his face. For his sneakers and his t-shirt, I'm using some Vallejo Off-White. And for his jeans, some of this dark blue. Now a combination of some electric blue and some of this light grey to create the dry brushing for his jeans. I was trying to create the old faded jeans look but in retrospect it's kind of still a bit too blue I think it needs to be a lot more faded it'll be something I'll be working on in the future and some white to dry brush his t-shirt now onto his hair some of this dark flesh tone I'm just doing a base coat of this then a lighter version to hit the tips and all I did to create that was just add a bit of white to the dark flesh tone He has a belt, so I need to paint that with some of this chocolate paint. So, well, it's not actually chocolate. And some silver also for the buckle. Now I decided to add a bit of an emblem to the side of his sneakers with a bit of red. And in the middle of that, I added a white A. I also wanted to add a bit of a logo to his t-shirt. So I've got some of these leftover decals from a previous model car build that I did. And with a bit of Mark Softer there, and a bit of warm water, I was able to add the Valvoline logo to his shirt. This was my second attempt. The first one was the Champion logo, but that fell apart. To add a bit of detail to his sneakers, some panel line accent colour from Tamiya. And there he is, just about done. But if his face isn't horrified enough, let's add a bit of gore to it. Now I'm using a combination of this clear red and smoke. And this combination gives me a really nice translucent blood. The poor dude is really in a bit of a pickle. With the figure complete, let's move on to the spider. Now I'm using some of this 2mm static grass for his body. And this is what's going to give me that hairy look. 
First I need to give them a good coat of this PVA glue, craft glue, wood glue, same stuff. Make sure it's a nice thick even coat. And then hit it with my static grass applicator and this will make all the static grass stand up. Now with a green hairy body it doesn't look very threatening at the moment but let's fix that. And that's what he looks like with a nice coat of flat black paint. Looks a lot more threatening now. I'm really happy with the way this is coming along. Now I'm not going to leave him black because that would be boring. So let's start painting him with a bit of rust. Now I'm adding this to his head. And making sure I get into all the crevices and all the cracks there. A nice even coat. And then from there, I'm using some of this earth from Ammo. And this is a dry brushing paint. It's really thick, great to use. And with that, I just dry brush all his legs with a nice light coat, just to bring out the detail. It's looking so good at the moment. But I do want to add a bit more color to his head, especially those googly eyes of his. Now I'm starting off with some of this dwarf skin, again from Vallejo, and I've thinned that down with some median and just hit the high areas with the paint. All I'm trying to achieve is some depth into the paintwork. Just using some off-white for his googly eyes. I then use some of this panel line accent colour from Tamiya to bring out some of the recessed detail. Also off-camera, I did paint his eyes with some black paint. Just those little pupils. Now the spider's looking really, really good. I'm very happy with the results so far, but his body still does look a bit flat. So I'm using some of this earth, again from Ammo, and I'm gonna dry brush his hairy bits. And it's just a very light coat, just to bring out the details. In this particular case, I just start off really light dry brushing and slowly build it up as I gain confidence in the look. And we're almost done. He's looking great, but I kind of think it needs a bit more. So I'm going to use some more dry brushing onto the end of his feet. And I'm going to use some of this gun metal from Ammo. Again, a dry brushing paint. And we're just going to hit the tips. And there he is, all done. He's looking quite good and menacing. I really like the way his head's come up in all those eyes. I did add a bit of a red wash to his eyes to give him the bloodshot look. And with the two main characters all done, it's onto the base. Off camera, what I did was use a bit of XPS foam for the back, some foam core board. I then coated the whole thing with some PVA glue to seal everything, and then some undercoat from a spray can. What I was trying to achieve is to get that concrete look that they have in industrial basements. A little while ago, I tried to create a resin pool with a mutant shark theme to it, which turned out to be an absolute disaster. That is online, so if you want to go check that fail, go have a look, it's funny. Well, it wasn't at the time. During that build, I'd printed up a bunch of extra piping. And I'm using that in this particular diorama. It's fantastic because it's modular. And I've got all these elbow joints and uh, support brackets, that type of thing. And it's going to come in very handy for this particular diorama. The whole thing's glued together with super glue. Really simple to do. And it's just a matter of cutting it and shaping it to the requirements that I need for this particular diorama. I do have a rough idea what particular look I want. And it's just a matter of finding the right components to put this together. Like I said, it's modular, so it gives me so many options. And I'll have it running across the wall, down the wall, then along, uh, along the floor. Off camera, I did give the base a few shades of some mottled grey. Just very shades of grey, some darker grey, some lighter grey, just to add a bit of visual interest once again. The piping got a, a coat of flat black over it. Now to wash the whole thing in some of this Vallejo dark rust. 
I want it to look old and like kind of almost look like it's leaked at one stage and it's created this mutant uh, spider. This light sand from Emma, again a dry brushing uh, paint. I'll be using that for the concrete areas. A very light dry brush just to bring out some of the detail. Or else it looks a bit boring and flat. And now all the piping system just held into place with some super glue. Now onto some of this rust texture from Valahel to create some, well, rust texture. I'm just using a piece of sponge here and dabbing them into some random areas around the piping. Anywhere really that'll give me some visual interest. And here I'm just hitting some of the raised edges with some gunmetal, once again from ammo. Now I do want to keep it looking really old, so I'm doing a really minimal amount of some of this um, gunmetal. Now to give me an idea of where I'm heading, just a quick composition check here. And then, once I'm happy with that, time to do the super glue everything into place. The spider will be the last thing I glue into place because I don't want to work around it. So I can place him whenever I want. Now let's detail this uh, bucket with a bit of silver paint for the metal sections and then some black paint for the wheels and also the handle. And look at that bucket, looks really nice. I did give it a black wash as well, just to age it up a bit. You know, the thing's been used. Now to add a bit more to the story, I've printed up some of these radioactive signs and I'm gonna place them onto the wall. And to weather them up, I'm just using some various shades of brown wash. They've been hanging in the deep, dark, dingy basement for so long, so they're looking a bit rough. Now a quick cutout with a very sharp hobby knife and to glue them onto the wall I just use a bit of PVA glue. It did take me a couple of goes to get that poster in the right place or rather that warning sign. And then I temporarily put the spider in its place just to work out where I put all the other props. Now onto that mop that I'm scratch building. So I'm using some of this two part epoxy ribbon and once you combine the two different parts, it goes hard within about 10 minutes. So I've just got a piece of styrene rod for the handle. And then I just shaped it with my fingers. Now I'm using a bit of wax paper there because the stuff is actually a bit tacky, a bit sticky. Once I got it to the shape, I just used a hobby knife to cut it into um, strips. And there it is. Looks pretty good. I like that. And then a drop of PVA glue to secure that into place. And talking about PVA glue... I use that to represent the spilled water. You now may be asking yourself, hey geek, how is he stuck to the wall? Well, I'll be using some cobweb and to create that, I'm using some of this spider serum from Green World. But first I need to make a spider frame, a spider web frame, and I'm using some of this clear styrene. And just covering him with some strands here. I need to do this so the spider webbing has something to attach to. You need to use an airbrush for the spider serum. This spider webbing is really fine, so you need to wear a mask and be in a very well ventilated area because it goes absolutely everywhere. So there's our base ready to go for the spraying. This bit I'm doing in my spray booth. Now you'll see some particles flying off to the sides. That's how fine it is. It's really crazy fine. And this is where I ran into a bit of a problem. Because as I was spraying it, you can see it's building up, but the pressure from the actual airbrush was making it wrap around the clear sprue rather than spread. So I kind of had to do it from a distance just to get it to stick to anything. But the problem with that is I had a lot of overspray. So it was going absolutely everywhere. With so much overspray everywhere, there was a bit of cleaning to do. In fact, there was a lot of cleaning to do. Gotta admit, I'm not a huge fan of this stuff. It really is difficult to use. But then again, this is the first time I've used it. I'm probably about 80% happy with the final result. I think this is one of those things that's gonna take me a few goes to get right. But anyway, yeah, I'm happy with it. So, I reckon it's time for the hero shots.